I'm here with Hussein Amini. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much. Two faces of January. I can't think of a more epic <laughs> movie into the psyche of man. <laughs> I know you had mentioned that it was a book that you had read a while ago and just wanted to bring it to the screen. Yeah, it, it was one of those books that I read and, and the characters kind of got under my skin and, and I kept on failing at getting it made. And, but I kept on picking it up and rereading again. And, and, and over time, you know, as I grew older, it kind of spoke to me in different ways and, and other influences started coming in. And I couldn't, it was an obsession really. I couldn't, I couldn't sort of forget about it. So I kept on every few years trying to get it made again. <laughs> it took 25 years. So. <laughs> it, what, you know, in 25 years, you, you, you've grown as an individual, read so much. You know, what were some of the changes that you saw well, in it? I said there was a period where I read lots of um, Fitzgerald, and that sort of fed into this book because I was suddenly, you know, just the idea of people wanting to be something desperately, whether it's Gatsby or Dick Diver and Tenderness and Light, and... and and yet somehow fate or society or something conspires and, and they fail at what they want to become. And, and this whole theme of a kind of life defeating you, I just sort of thought in Fitzgerald was really powerful. So that started feeding into, then also I got older, so suddenly I was married, so I knew what it was like to, to be scared of losing someone you love and, and then just that marital bickering and stuff. So all these, you know, and, 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 and money suddenly became more of an issue as I grew older. So all of these things just started, and I think the sign of a great book is when it kind of speaks to you at different periods of your life. You know, you know the, the wonderful, it seems like you're self-analyzing, and here you are also reading and analyzing different characters. When you were developing the script, how deep did you go into, you know, character development? I know um, Patricia uh, Highsmith you know, is a psychological uh, storyteller. Yeah. Did you go into, you know, more of her books, or did you really? Yeah, no, I did. I read all of her books, and it's interesting how I think she has this theme. She's, she, she, she almost captures male dynamics better than any male crime writer I've, I've ever come, a, come across. And, 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 and the, the, the fact that as men, you can admire other men, but you want to compete with them and be better than them. And, and everything is, is almost like a contest. And, and in all her books, there is that sense of that thing we all have where, you know, it's, it's, it's almost you're more fascinated by other men. I mean, in, in her books, the, the men are more fascinated with each other often than they are than, but by the women. And the women are a catalyst to get them to fight and compete and sometimes kill each other. But it's, it's, it's really about them. And, and that was really interesting to me, that, she, that, 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 that idea that she, yeah. she captures. You know, because, because the story... Uh, a married couple meet um, another uh, expatriate in yeah. uh, London. Yeah. And then, the, or, or in th Athens. Uh, th thank you, Greece. And they um, and then they travel around in Istanbul and such. But it's that interconnectedness that draws them, which is fascinating. You know, wh what did you find interesting in each character? Because then we can branch into the actors and how they portrayed yeah. them. What What I found, they were all they were all pretending to be something they weren't. That they all wanted to be something that they weren't being successful at. And I got, you know, Oscar wants to be a writer, but he's not really serious about his writing, his part. Vigo wants to make his wife happy by being rich, but events are conspiring. And she wants to be in New York. She wants to have a great life as a wealthy kind of wife in New York. And she ends up, you know, on a dirty bus in Crete. So everyone is where they don't want to be. And I sort of found that. And I think they're all, but they're all, but that lack in them also makes them need each other and I think they're all even though they fight and they eventually destroy they're, 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 they're tied to each other almost you know they need each other as well they need, they need and hate each other Poach it from the standpoint that maybe it was fate that was bringing them together? Yeah, I had this absolute notion of fate and because it was obviously set in Greece it was sort of in my head it was also like this idea of the Greek gods as sort of you know almost like you know punishing them for their crimes and, 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 and you know, that th there's that cruelty that, and, and that's kind of, I think, been the case in literature the whole way through that, you know, whether it was in the old days it was the gods and then it became fate and then psychology and whatever, but it's, it's something punishing us for, for what we, you know, for what we do wrong. And I think these th poor, three poor kind of criminals are all being punished in their own way. Right, we, we always hope that there's a little bit of forgiveness somewhere. Yeah, there. yeah. No, but the compassion is, I think, to direct something like this, characters and I loved all three of them I mean for all their flaws and weaknesses and whatever I just think you know every every there's that saying every um, 
uh, every villain is the hero of their own story. Yeah. You know, when, and I'm curious, you know, when you were, uh, when you are directing Vigo and uh, Christian and, and uh, uh, Isaac, did you feel like you were talking to the character? Yeah, did yeah, you I feel like they came alive? I, I saw it a combination of talking to them both, the character and the person, because I thought what they bring to it as a person and their own individuality and idiosyncrasies and whatever is so crucial as well to making that thing three dim the parts three-dimensional and real. So I was often asking them kind of questions about themselves and trying to find out how, what they'd do in a situation like that as well as what the character would do. It, it's, it's fascinating. Um, you know, when, when they come with their own character, were there a few moments where you thought, boom, they got it. That's exactly how I pictured it when I read it or how I pictured it well, from I, the I film. Was, often it was uh, how surprised I was. Like, there was a scene with Oscar in the ferry where he just suddenly disappeared and he went into a corner and I could just see him working himself up. And then he just suddenly, it's, 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 it's the scene where he's having the face off with Vigo in the ferry and it was a totally silent scene. But he just came in. I sort of left him alone because I thought there was something going on. I thought, I'm not going to go and talk to him or direct him. I'm just going to see what he does. And he really surprised me. And often it was those surprises which are the most exciting thing for me on set. Um, and often what I, what I, almost more into, much more interesting than anything I'd imagined in my head, it was just that element of accident or surprise, I think, is, is really exciting. Did, did you guys ever have a chance to read portions of the book? Because I know you read the script, and did you guys have a chance to? They all went away and reread the book. Oh, okay. They did, and, and, and took elements, and we had a long discussion process and rehearsals before we started shooting. So elements of the book came back into the script, but I think, I think we were always on the same page. It, was, it felt very collaborative. And, and directing, you know, how, how was it? I mean, it's such a big story, big locations. You know, was it fairly easy, the process? Or was I, it I found shooting really enjoyable and really fun. And I had, I had such, such a great crew. I think the great thing about being a first-time director is everyone's so panicked. You're going to mess up. They surround you with the best heads of department. So I was, I was, you know, I was very spoiled. But, but I loved that process. I, I found editing tougher. Did, did you? Yeah, yeah. I did that a lot. I found editing tougher because it was suddenly trying to find the story. And also with this kind of story where the, the characters aren't automatically likable, it's, it's sort of half thriller, half drama to try to find the balance. And, and Highsmith is often more interested in character than necessarily pace, so that became an issue trying to find the right pace. So there's a lot of challenges. <laughs> what was it a longer process editing everything by that time? Well it was it was it was long because it was I think it takes with some movies I think they're easy to find. With other ones it just takes a, you know the balancing act is, is very precarious. So how was it um uh, taking off each hat, you know, okay, I'm a director now, I'm writer, I'm editor or were you just all one and just Going crazy I about felt, it. No, I felt, I, I kind of, having been a screenwriter for so long, I, I'm always going to feel a writer. Inside, I kind of feel like a writer. And, and, and like, I mean, I, I love the other stuff, but it's, um, <laughs> but I don't think you ever escape from what yeah. you start out being. Right, right. <laughs> so you, you, a bit like these characters in this book, that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And, and how do you feel the, the, um, with the film complete screen? Perfect. You feel you, you found your story. Nothing missing. Or are there are a few no, things. No, I don't you think you can ever. I just, <laughs> I just think that all I can see in my, Finish. you know, you, you see, you know, what you would have done differently. And it, it, it's also I, you stop seeing the film because I've watched it 50 times at least <laughs> in the whole editing process. Yeah, yeah, so, so, and and then I think that's part of filmmaking. It's now about what audiences think. I mean, so now what I think of the film is informed by I don't know the reviews I read or the interviews I read and things like that. And I think, well, this is what people think, and that's what they're getting. And. You know, it's some of the comments from you know friends, families who who have have seen it. Uh, what have they said to you? Boy, you know, you, you captured the essence of the story. Yeah. I think I think what's what I'm really proud of is the Highsmith. You know, the two Highsmith biographers have been incredibly positive, and 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 people I think also just I think capturing that atmosphere that she creates. And I think you know, as as, as someone who adapts books, it's it's obviously that's a great source of pride. And I'm very proud of the performances. I, th I think they're they're really you know wonderful actors doing you know doing their job brilliantly. <laughs> You, know, the, the, you brought you brought up a good point, and you have you know a couple of critics that who know her work. Did, did they f have you ever talked with someone who knows her work intimately and and say, "Oh, well, you you do know her her work." Yeah, I mean, her her biographers. I met her her English biographer who, whose book I um, called Andrew Wilson, whose book I'd, I'd really loved. So it was fascinating to kind of and, and it was I was so nervous before that screening because it was um, you know. That, 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 that is, uh, <laughs> yeah, exa exactly, exactly. But obviously, uh, all five stars. I wouldn't say that, but, but he was no, he was very he was he was very nice about it. <laughs> and you know, and, and now at this point, you know, the movie screening is going to get out there, and you know, your hope is the audience will walk away with a glimpse of. 
Highsmith, a glimpse of the actor, the story, and its yeah, and, and also just I think that thing of you know really enjoying a thriller and being surprised in twists and turns, but also suddenly being shown characters who are not the normal crime thriller characters, and also sort of hold up a mirror to us in a weird way. And I, th I think that's you know to maybe you know you want people to be moved and touched and think you know think as well as being entertained. I think. And, and uh, now you get some new projects coming along down the pike. I'm, sure? I'm sort of um, just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see how this does. I'd love to write and direct again, but I'm just kind of really, in, in a way, I don't want to tempt fate. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to wait and see what happens. Fantastic. And and, and this film, um, I'm sure there's dot com, social media for promotion. Find out more about it. You can look for Two Faces of January y online. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they're, they're doing a brilliant job sort of publicizing it. So, yeah, yeah. You're saying, yeah, fantastic film. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank so you for taking the time. No, thank Appreciate you for doing it. the interview. I really appreciate Absolutely. it, too. And it's really lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you.